Hey guys and welcome to Heart of Fun 4 Kaiser Redux, a sub-mod of the mod Kaiserreich, which asks the question, what if Germany won World War 1? Today we'll be playing as the Russian Republic and we'll be restoring the Russian Socialist Republic under Shukov, retaking lands that are rightfully ours. So let's get started. After the October Revolution, anti-Bolshevik forces started to consolidate across the former Russian Empire, leading to a massive rebellion against the Soviet Republic in Siberia. The white movement made considerable gains, but could not defeat the well-placed Red Army, which still dominated the Russian industrial heartland and, and transportation networks. The war changed when the German Empire, fearing the success of a dangerous ideology, intervened on behalf of the whites in exchange for recognition of the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk. By January 1920, both Moscow and Petrograd had fallen to the white forces. The majority of white leaders decided to hold the Constituent Assembly and the result of a new Russian Republic was established in the former imperial capital. Today, Russia is becoming increasingly unstable and other political forces are growing. They consider that it is now time for change so that the country may once again assert its power in the world. Long live Russia! The assassination of Kerensky the sound of gunfire rings across the capital. Alexander Kerensky, the president of the Russian Republic, was shot by an extremist while he was climbing the steps to the Senate House. A shot that will ring across the world. The aftermath of the assassination of Kerensky, snap elections should be held, otherwise the military will try to overtake the country by force. Pavel Gorgulov has carried out an assassination of a high-ranking official. Pavel Gorgulov is sentenced to death penalty. And here, the acting president, Dmitry Romanov, takes the office. Oh, and the Great Berlin stock market crash just happened. And here we can start announcing snap elections, or else in 52 days, the military will seize control. But yeah, I'm not going to hold the snap elections just yet. It's not like anything will go wrong. <laughs> oh. Today, several high military commanders under the leadership of Lavrov Konolov have seized administrative buildings in large Russian cities. And now we are led under Lavrov Kornilov. Rumors of a plot. There are rumors that some high military generals are planning to coup against our government. We'll try to bring them over. And Ryan in Petrograd. At first, workers have organized a strike, but it quickly exploded into a mass unrest. Try to negotiate with their leaders. The riot expands. And finally, the victory of the revolutionaries. Red Army is the strongest. And we are now the Russian Socialist Republic. And now we get the Siberian insurgency. While we have secured our power in Western Russia, territories eastern to the Ural Mountains are now in a state of anarchy. The government of the Far Eastern Republic of Transmar will try to use this panic to conquer these lands. However, the citizens of these territories do not recognize our government as legitimate and we have to do these decisions to restore order over these areas. And oh no, Kingdom of Finland seizes Eastern Karelia, but we must focus on Siberia. And with the final state chosen, we have managed to restore control of most parts of Siberia. And now we get the third international. Better start packing. And now we get revolution successful. Now it is time to turn to our internal problems and decide on the leadership of our young socialist republic. Shukov consolidates his rule. And we can start doing some of these focuses now. Oh, and the Far Eastern Republic of Transmor suddenly declared war on us. And I guess it is time for us to retake our rightful land in the Far East. Alright, and after Transmore's failed push, which has cost them a lot of manpower, I think we now have the strength to start pushing them. That's some nice encirclements. And another nice encirclement. 
and I think here that the Transmar army is pretty close to non-existence and we can just rush into the victory points and win the war. Let's go boys. And here we have the fall of Vladivostok. The Siberian war has led to a secure victory and unconditional surrender of the splinter state of Transmor in the Far East. Far Eastern soldiers surrender en masse. The soldiers recognize the power of the Russian Socialist Republic and the Alexander Kolchak is ready to stop all military actions in the region. The victory is ours. And we have won the Siberian war. And now that we've defeated Siberia, we're going to continue expanding our influence. And to do that, firstly, we'll have to join the Internationale. And the Russian Socialist Republic has joined the Third Internationale. And next up on the focus tree, we're going to secure Central Asia. And now we can attack the Orenburg Cossack coast. And now that we've defeated the Orenburg Cossack host, we can attack the Islamic Khanate of Turkestan. And we have defeated the Islamic Emirate of Turkestan as well. And now that we're done with the Turkic countries, I'm going to choose Red Cossacks, which allows us to start expanding our influence in the Caucasus. And I'm first going to do attack the Kalmyuk state, offer them to join us peacefully. Oh, and Kalmyuk rejects our demands. And next up, we're going to try to attack the mountainous republic of the Northern Caucasus. Oh, and they've also rejected our demands. And next up is the Kuban People's Republic, Georgian Socialist State and Azerbaijan. And look at who's the leader of the Georgian Socialist State. He definitely looks very, very familiar. The Georgian question threatened them with force, the Baku oil fields, take over the Baku oil concern and control the government, what to do with Kaban, start sending agitators. The Seris agree, nice. The Georgian leadership rejected our rightful demands. Why Stalin? Oh, uh, I guess I have to declare war on Stalin now. Oh, and the Russian coup succeeds in Kuban. And now we can attack Armenia. And finally, we can attack the Don Republic. Ah, and the Russian coup succeeds in the Don Kuban Union. And we have annexed the Don Republic, and the Caucasus has returned to the rightful rule of the motherland. And here, as you can see, Ottoman Empire is actually being attacked by many countries. So I was thinking that maybe I could join in the fun and take some lands from the Ottoman Empire by declaring war on them. Oh, and we've defeated the Ottoman Empire. And we will allow the formation of a new Turkic Republic. And for some reason, we're still at war with this country, which is Jebal Shamar, which means we have to move through Persia to get to that country. And it seems like the Second World War has broken up between Germany and France. We'll get to that later. Mm -hmm. 
and we're now done with the Middle East. And finally, before our final assault, our final war against Germany. Ukraine actually left the Reich's pact because they turned communist, which means we can just declare war with them. And now that we've defeated Ukraine, we can start preparing for our final war against Germany. So, the pieces are all set, and now we can launch the final battle. It appears that some old grudges never die. Germany and Russia have once again locked swords on the battlefield as Russia strives to regain past glories and execute revenge on the Germans. Can Germany survive both Russia and the Commune of France? Only time will tell if Germany can fend off the two great powers, or if history will repeat itself. Let us begin the final war for the motherland. And now, here we've defeated Belarus, the United Baltic States and Lithuania and we're advancing into the German mainland. Uh, so I declared war in Bulgaria but they joined the Austrian faction, which means I'm now at war with the rest of the Danau Adria Bund. That's a potential problem. Austria declares war. Whatever the case may be, it is not a good sign for socialist forces within Europe and around the world. Austria declaring war on me is allowing me to have a simple passage into Germany, which is quite unexpected to be honest. And Poland has capitulated, which means we can move into Austria and Germany. This is good. And Finland has also capitulated. And here are we about to march into Berlin with our opposition. And a hey, reports from Berlin confirmed that the German city has been captured by advancing Russian troops after a long merciless fighting through the greatest city of the Reich Pact. As shocked Berliners looked on, the Russian army paraded down the Brandenburg Gate before listening to a speech by Gorgi Shukov in front of the famous monument. However, what eventually seems to have caught the attention and memory of the world is a picture of a Russian soldier proudly holding the Russian flag from the roof of a heavily damaged Reichstag. And the Austrian Empire has capitulated. These borders are slightly cancerous, but we'll deal with it later, because right now we need to defeat Germany. And here we've got a huge encirclement of uh, Eastern Germany. Ah, 
Another nice encirclement. Victory is near, comrades. The collapse of the right is packed. It appears that the unthinkable has occurred with nowhere left to run. The Kaiser and his cabinet have met and agreed that the complete surrender was imminent within days. It is clear that the world order which has existed since the end of the first Feld Creek is about to come to a fiery end, what the Tsar could never achieve. And we get a peace deal here which deals with these countries. And the German Empire has capitulated as well. Right, time to mop up the rest of Europe. And we get the fate of Germany. The German Empire is defeated. Our brave soldiers proudly march through the Unter den Laden, displaying without doubt that Russian armed forces prevailed in mortal struggle against the Germans. We now have to decide what to do with the lands of our former enemy. And we're going to liberate Rhineland, North Germany, Bavaria and Prussia. The fall of Germany. Today the unthinkable has occurred. German air forces fighting in Europe have finally collapsed under the weight of invading armies. For now, the war in Europe is over and the worldwide German Empire has been thrown into utter disarray. And now that we've defeated the Reich Pact, there's only one thing left to do, which is attack Serbia and the Belgrade Pact and cement our place as the dominant force of Europe. And here, we've finally cleared out the borders of the Balkans as well. And the workers of Europe, the Third International and Russia has prevailed. I think there's only one thing left for us to do. And that is to form the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Many say it couldn't be done back in 1937 when half of our countries was engulfed in other forces, but we held on. We prevailed, and now the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics not only returned, not only took back its former lands, but also spread influence in Eastern Europe and spread socialism to the whole of Europe. So, uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, Kaiser Redux is definitely a fun mod. I know most of my audience probably just watches my New Order videos, but it's always cool trying out different mods. So, subscribe to this channel if you want more hardcore videos. We've hit 1000 subscribers recently, which is just insane. Thank you all for your support. But either way, I'll see you all in the next video. Glory to the Union.